everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of Good Night with Scooter Pie. Woo! Before we begin, I just wanted to say a few words about the guest I had the pleasure of interviewing recently. She is a, I have hair in my mouth, she's a musician, performance artist, and soon to be music therapist, Cynthia Hopkins. You can find more about her music and performances at CynthiaHopkins.com. And also she has a new musical project called Fellwalkers, which she also talks about. And she gives some information about how you can find her music. And we are so lucky because she even plays a song for us. So without saying any more, I would like to show you my interview with the one and only Cynthia Hopkins. Um, well, I had a career as a performer for, um, you know, mostly weird avant-garde, <laughs> uh, perform live performance pieces. Um, I worked with a company called Big Dance Theater for many years that is still kicking around. And I was in a show of their, I was in a couple shows of their just in the last few years. And then I made my own work. Um, so I had a band for a long time and then I've done solo concerts, um, of just music and then, and then I've made sort of musical performance works, I guess is what I call them. Um, so they have songs. So I guess, I mean, technically I guess they're musicals cause they're, mm -hmm. there's kind of storytelling and there's songs. Um, they tend to be a little bit on the uh you know experimental side but they are also not um ex abstract like they're semi-autobiographical they use, sometimes they're just storytelling the last show i made was just storytelling really about uh, my life an event that had happened in my life where my apartment burned down um but for example that was told through like I had different sections of it, and the different sections were were modeled on performing artists that I have loved. So, like, there was a Spalding Gray section, and he was a storyteller, and he had a very distinct way of selling, telling stories. So I told part of my story, but as if I were channeling Spalding Gray, and then I did that with Laurie Anderson, and then I did that with all these different other, other um, artists that have inspired me, and it kind of was about how to get through challenging um, circumstances uh, Boy, by, me, by making stuff. <laughs> what was the name of that show? That was called Articles of Faith. Um, and so, you know, Articles of Faith are just, it's not a religious term. It just means whatever you believe in, regardless of what happens in terms of circumstances. And for me, what I really believe in is I can always use whatever happens to make um songs or you know stories or um costumes um uh or you know signs with lights on them <laughs> <laughs> or headdresses i've been making a headdress Ooh. Um, recently so that's one of the things i've been doing um yeah and that gets that's what really gets me through Hard times and good times. So when you did these shows, like, was it just you or did you have, like, a an ensemble generally? Um, for, a year, for quite a few years, I made really large-scale pieces that involved a lot of other people. And part of that is that it they came out of having a band. And so I sort of the band predated the performance shows. Like, I was working as a performer in shows. And then I had, and then I had my own band, and then I sort of started making my own shows, but incorporating the band. And so there were like, let's, I guess, it was kind of a, a mor morphing group of pe of musicians, but it would, was anywhere from like five to ten people playing. And then um, I started to hire uh, designers and choreographers and stuff, and to help me with those elements. Um, and then some of those people ended up also performing in the shows. And so they weren't, you know, they were kind of solo shows, some of them, in that I said most of the words, but um, 
but oftentimes some of those other people would also kind of play characters or like the video people would ha would operate the video you know with a costume and and like involved on the stage and then they would sort of start to seem like maybe they were also characters um and be very much yeah involved do you think you'll ever do any of these shows again or is this just like in the past um, for you now well one of the things that happened it's pretty much in the past partly because to do that work i had to it 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 was um, awesome and wonderful in many ways, uh, you know, in part because of all those other people, but it also meant that I was responsible for paying all those people and, mm -hmm. um, and they were, they were really, they were expensive. Um, and so I had to do kind of constant fundraising, which it, and also just, I, I ran a com I ran a nonprofit company to support them. And um, I don't want to go back to doing that. And the other thing about that is that, um, the sh the fire that the, the last show I made was about um, destroyed a lot of the stuff that was used for the show. Oh. <laughs> the fire actually started in I I had an office for my company and the and the office was also the costume department because I mm -hmm. well, I mean yeah, I didn't make all the costumes but. Um, but they were all there. They were like behind me. I had a desk and there was just like costume and there were a lot of costumes and the fire started in that costume rack. So all the costumes were destroyed. Um, and then, you know, yeah, just video stuff and props and um, headdresses, uh, a lot of wigs. Um, and so it would really be, I have, I actually, after the fire, I did one, sh I did make one show that was really just solo and it was, mm -hmm. a, it was kind of about folding the company and sort of stripping things down and not wanting to do that fundraising and, and that administration and producing anymore. And so sort of because that's what the show is about it's, it's very much solo and I did actually perform that after the fire and I had to get all new stuff I had to get a new accordion because my accordion burned in the fire oh my goodness <laughs> and I had to get sort of different versions of the costumes which were inferior to the originals but um so I could maybe someday somebody will somebody some version of them will happen again who knows what will happen or maybe there will be new work someday. There may be new works. So there probably will be new work. There are two folders full of notes for two different projects. <laughs> and, you know, I'm making, I've actually started making music with a friend that um, is like an ongoing collaboration called Fell Walker. Mm -hmm. And we're making it, we're working on an album, a full length album that is on pause because we're in quarantine mm -hmm. but we've actually been making songs related to being in quarantine which probably oh. every songwriter on earth is doing but <laughs> um, none other of them are you but and we're putting them we're just putting them out um as we're making them so there's one out right now where can we find um, your new music well, there's it's fellwalkermusic.com. Like F E L L Walker. F E L L. Yeah. So my um, so that's a real word. My word. my collaborator found it. I don't know how he came across it, but um, it means I guess in uh maybe Scotland or somewhere like that they call like wild, uncultivated, hilly hilltops. They call them fells. And so somebody who likes to wander around in those types of hills is a fell walker, like a, somebody who walks the fells. Um, so yeah, F-E-L-L-W-A-L-K-E-R. And so the site, website is fellwalkermusic.com. That's fellwalkermusic.com. Yeah, the reason that I love theater is because it, it incorporates so many different things. You know, you mm -hmm. can... You can have music and you can have talking and you can have dancing and you can have a design element and you can have, you know, it's sort of like the, the encompasser. Um, I would say probably the thing that, that, um, like keeps me alive is music. 
um, like is like the balm to my soul <laughs> is music. Um, and that's how that, you know, that's how I ended up pursuing music therapy because it really, it really has saved my butt many, 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 many billions of times. And that is an excellent segue. So now you are currently um, studying to get a master's degree in music therapy. What is yeah. music therapy? What the heck is it? Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's pretty much what it sounds like in terms of it's a form of therapy, like, and so like any form of therapy, it's, it's, it's a practice to help people, <laughs> um, to help them function better in life. Uh, and using music as a, as, as one of the tools to, to do that. And so that could be, that can be what they call receptive, which is just listening, listening to music. Um, it can be group therapy where like the group listens and then, and then talks about music. And the thing is about music that's great for that purpose is, you know, you can, it's like that song, sad song, say so much. Like sometimes a song <laughs> or a mu or mu even music without words can really help you like feel your feelings or mm -hmm. be a way to talk about what's going on with you. Um, and that, or, you know, there's also making music is a, is one of the things you can do. Writing songs is another one or just improvising and, so like on a mental health front, sometimes just banging on a drum is therapeutic because, um, you know, again, it like it gets in touch with some visceral expression. Um, and then it can also be helped for people with brain injuries mm -hmm. to uh, there's actually a wonderful video that we watched in a class about Gabby Giffords who got shot, the politician who got mm -hmm and she had brain damage and like part of the part of the brain that produces speech is very localized and she couldn't speak anymore but music because it has all these different elements like rhythm and tempo and you know melody and also like volume and pitch it's spread out throughout the brain where your bot where your brain like receives it and can make it and so someone like her who can't speak anymore, she could still sing songs. And then her brain was able to sort of use that as like the music therapist in the video says, it's like a, um, if you have a traffic, you know, the roads being worked on, you have a roadblock and you go look routed around that part of the road. It's the brain can do that. Like it can reroute. Oh, you know, and I, who knows how it happens, but it can access the music part to help start to be able to produce speech again for example that's a really like specific example all of us are experiencing a worldwide tra trauma right now yes any suggestions for what um maybe like a, a simple thing that someone can do i know you already gave some suggestions like we can bang on drums or we can like just sing songs but like if there's yes. kind of, like exercise that you do with um with patients that that could help us <laughs> um i mean for me I would think maybe that this could just comes to mind because I'm um, a vocalist, but this is also, you can do it without even vocalizing. It can just be a breathing exercise where, cause I know there's a lot of anxiety. <laughs> it's like, Oh my God. What's gonna happen? And so um, to calm the nervous system, a really simple breathing exercise is just to breathe in for let's say four counts and then just kind of suspend that not holding your breath like uh, but just kind of suspending it for four counts and then exhale for eight counts uh and then you can and then you can double that and you can double it again if you can so you basically you want to exhale even if you forget what the numbers are if you exhale for longer than you inhale it activates the parasympathetic nervous system, which is like the calming rest and digest. That's right. It's the rest and digest. And so, and you know, if it soothes you to vocalize, some people I know that they don't, you know, doesn't make them feel good to vocalize. For me, I like to go like, uh, <laughs> I want to do that too. Let's do it. Okay, ready? Okay, ready? One, okay. breathe in. Uh. 
whatever makes either calms you or maybe you need to listen to a song that makes you cry because you really just need to cry for a little while um yeah cool thank you for that suggestion everybody's vocalized um, yes so i see you have there i know you play a number of, of instruments right you play piano guitar and accordion are the, the yes did i leave anything out okay um, well, this, I want to say that I am 100% certain, I met you here in Philadelphia a few years ago, but I'm certain that I used to see you playing the accordion down in the um, 14th Street and 6th Avenue at the uh, station, like, in, I don't know, in the early 2000s or something, and you had long hair, yeah. and I thought you were so cool. Oh, my God. I used to get kicked out of there by the coppers. <laughs> You're just so, like, so memorable. So I remember you from then. And little did I know that you would be my dear friend now in a whole other state. So I'm so excited that you um, are willing to play a song for us. Oh, yeah. So please, go ahead. Take it away. Um, yeah, this is, I'm not going to do an original. I'm going to do a cover uh, of a David Bowie song. Ooh! <laughs> Do you? Oh yeah. Yeah. You would be you'd be a little crazy. You had to be crazy not to. Okay. Pushing through the market square. So many mothers sighing. The news had just come over. We had five years left to cry. <laughs> The newsman wept and told us the earth is busy dying. He cried so much his face was wet, and I knew he was not lying. And I heard telephones, opera house, favorite melodies, I saw boys, toys, electric eyes on TV. No room to spare. I had to cram so many things to store. Everything in there and all the fat, skinny people. And all the tall, short people. And all the nobody people. And all the somebody people. I never thought I'd need so many people. Girl my age went off her head, hit some tiny children. If a black hadn't pulled her off, I think she would have killed them. A soldier with a broken arm, makes she stare to the wheels of a Cadillac. A cop now kissed the feet of a priest, and a queer threw up at the sight of that. I thought I saw you in an ice cream parlor, drinking milkshakes cold and long, smiling and waving and looking so fine. I don't think you knew you were in this song, and it was poor. So I felt like an actor and I thought of my And I wanted to get back to your face, your race The way that you talk, I kiss you, you're beautiful I want you to walk me back Five years, that's all we got, we got Five years, my brain hurts a lot, we got Five years. 
Thank you for joining me for this exciting episode of Good Night with Scooter Pie. I hope you have a good night. We'll see you next time.